This is NBC 16 News at 530. It's phase one of reopening today in Oregon. That means some restaurants, child care centers, gyms and retail businesses have opened their doors to the public. Good evening and thanks for joining us for NBC 16 at 530. I'm Alan Matthews. For restaurants in particular, some are inviting the public back to sit down and dine with them. NBC 16's Angelina Dixon is live in front of Sub Shop on West 11th right now. So Angelina, how exactly did the reopening process go for them today? Alan, we have a sign back here that says open, and that means open for takeout and delivery for now. The owner at Sub Shop says they're actually reopening next week for in-store dining, and that's because they want a little more time to prepare social distancing signage for seating. The owner says their normal capacity is around 45, but that, of course, will be cut in half to comply with phase one restrictions. If you look around, you'll notice that we have tables and chairs in the right places. We've got sanitizer and all that kind of stuff set up. Um, but I'd really like to have more signage so people have a real good idea when they walk in the door, if, they, if they're, if they're going to walk in the door, uh, what they're supposed to do as far as waiting, keeping distant, and all that kind of stuff. And social distancing and dining and something else out of the norm with dining coming up tonight. For now, live here, Angelina Dixon, Sub Shop in Eugene. Back to you, Ellen. All right, thank you so much, Angelina, for that report. Well, as we take a look at the state, all of the yellow counties on the map are the 31 Oregon counties that Governor Brown approved to start phase one. In our region, that includes Lane, Douglas, Coos, Deschutes, Benton, and Lynn. All of the gray counties are the five that have not been approved. Marion and Polk counties applied but did not meet certain criteria. Multnomah, Washington, and Clackamas are all counties that have not applied for phase one of reopening yet. Those counties are still battling a large number of coronavirus cases. Now, this is a big turning point for the 31 counties approved since the pandemic hit our area. People can now gather in groups of up to 25 with distancing in place, breaking down what is now open with restrictions, of course. That includes restaurants, bars, salons, barbershops, gyms, and malls. So how exactly did Lane County and 30 other counties get to phase one? Well, to recap, all of these counties met certain criteria, and that includes a decline in hospitalizations and ER visits for people with coronavirus or with symptoms, a minimum testing regime, the ability to implement contact tracing, formatted a plan for isolation and quarantine facilities. They finalized statewide sector guidelines, and they had sufficient health care capacity and PPP PPE supply. Now remember, although we are now in phase one, health officials warn that this does not mean the virus is gone. So here are some good habits that we still need to continue to practice. Wear a face mask, wash your hands frequently, maintain six feet of physical distancing, stay home if you are feeling sick, and avoid non-essential travel. Now we know that that was a lot of information and there are some changes that we're going to go through together. So as we look ahead, what happens after phase one? Well, after 21 days in phase one, counties continuing to meet prerequisites may be able to enter phase two, which is considered a higher risk. The goal here is to increase crowd sizes and the mobility. Eligible counties can have in-person local gatherings up to 100 people with physical distancing. That number is subject to change. People can also visit nursing home again with limitations and office work can resume. There are no clear guidelines set yet, but again, this is after 21 days in phase one. Meanwhile, as we look further ahead, phase three is considered the highest risk. Governor Brown said this phase would require reliable treatment or a vaccine. So what's exactly in phase three? Well, let's take a look. Once implemented, it will allow concerts, conventions, festivals, and live audience sports to return. Meanwhile, more information on large gatherings scheduled for later in the fall will be provided this summer. But for now, for now all large gatherings should be canceled or modified through at least September. A Salem salon owner is facing a $14,000 fine from Oregon OSHA for defying the governor's executive order. Lindsey Graham, owner of Glamour, is also facing several penalties from the Oregon Health Authority's Health Licensing Office. Graham says up to four stylists each have seen up to four clients per day. She claims that they are independent contractors and not employees. I will have three days to shut my doors or they will cite me yet again for another issue that is once again not legal.
Investigators found Graham in violation of Governor Brown's executive order. Employees violating rules for social distancing and the masks were not being worn. Again, Marion County has not yet been approved to start phase one, which allows salons to reopen. And while many businesses are opening today, one business in North Bend has decided to stay closed a little longer. Painted Zebra Boutique has made the tough choice to continue their closure until Tuesday next week. Owner of the store says that we've already been closed eight weeks. What's a few more days? She will be using the extra four days to re-sanitize, finish rearranging the store, and ensure that she is prepared for her customers while following all the regulations and restrictions, as well as the guidelines to keep customers safe. Anything that's tried on is going to have a rack that it goes on. It goes in the back for a few days so that we're not bringing those germs back in. As well as any returns will be going on a quarantine rack as well in the back for a few days as well. Just to kind of really eliminate those germs. Plus, there will be a limit on how many items you can try on. Wilson says curbside services actually worked out great for herself and customers, so she will keep that around for a while. Painted Zebra Boutique will be open at 11 a.m. on Tuesday. As questions hover around the start of the school year, many people are wondering about the fate of high school sports and activities. NBC 16's Brandon Cameraman spoke with Pete Weber. He is the executive director of the Oregon School Activities Association. There are questions. What does it look like to reacclimatize kids? What type of ramp up time do people need? How does that impact regular season schedules? How does that impact potentially a playoff or state championship schedule? A lot of questions, not enough answers. We're trying to go off of the best information that we have at this time. And as most people have been reminded over the past two months, that information will likely be adjusted as we move forward. Which leaves the OSAA with many unknowns. Just started meeting this week to look at different scenarios and options and um, ideas and suggestions. Contingency groups formed by the association to look at all possibilities with one goal. How do we get kids and coaches and communities back engaged as soon as we can, as safely as we can? Taking parameters set by health officials and using contingency groups to figure out what there is to work with. I think at this point, uh, everything is under consideration. We're kind of putting everything on the table. Like starting fall seasons two weeks late, or a month late, or... Or we start and then we have to stop because of an outbreak uh, and put a pause in. Even moving certain fall sports to the spring and spring sports to the fall is under consideration. We'll look at it. We're gonna look at just about everything um, and see what makes sense. In a time when very little makes sense, the OSAA is providing contingencies. Our balance is we wanna make sure that people are safe. That's our number one priority. At the same time, we want to get them back. We want kids to be participating, um, getting all the benefits from being a part of high school activities. While so much is still unclear, the OSAA's message is simple. We will play again, and we're, and we're getting there. Brandon Cameraman reporting. Now, right now, even as counties begin to reopen, school facilities are closed for sports and activities. The OSAA's executive board will meet again next Wednesday to discuss the latest available information, and they will put out more info after that meeting. We now turn to the coronavirus numbers statewide as there are more than 3,500 coronavirus cases and 137 deaths in Oregon. More than 2,300 of those cases are in the northern counties in Multnomah, Marion, and Washington counties, where phase one has not yet get started. Despite having that number of cases, so far more than 800 people have recovered in those three counties. Today is also the second day in a row that OHA does not report any deaths. As we turn to our local numbers, they remain fairly low and stable. Benton County added another case. They have 51. Lynn County added two more cases. They have the most in our region with 109. In Lane County, we remain with 61 cases, including one presumptive case. Lane County Public Health has not announced any new cases in four days. Deschutes, well, they're a county that also has a high number in our region with 94. Douglas has 24 cases. 23 people, though, have recovered there, and only one case has been reported in the last 25 days. Coos County stands at 30. There are a total of 396 cases, but only 139 of those are active cases, according to OHA. Again, all those counties have started their phase one reopening. 
Well, coming up on your only local news at 5:30, one issue on the May 19th ballot is a bond measure for Lane Community College. The college president explains how that money would be used. As restaurants battle to reopen, we'll go inside their battle to lure back cautious customers. Also, the future of a right of summer kids camp, what the CDC says camps should consider before opening on Nightly News.